So we're going to continue our discussion um, about data visualization and especially using color maps um, because I think this is a topic that I both love because I like making print pictures with lots of with lots of colors, um, and also because it's something that I think um, is pretty important in terms of conveying data. Okay, so to continue our discussion of color maps, um, I wanted to specify that there are actually three different categorically different ways of uh, designing a color map. Okay? So, and uh, all of it depends on what you're trying to convey with your data, what the nature of the quantitative information the data is. Okay? So the first kind of color map is what I'm going to call a qualitative data map. Okay? This is appropriate when you have information that is categorical. Right. So uh, remember earlier we had, um, let's say that you had a map of different species as they live in a certain environment, um, and uh, there are there's, there are parts of the map that are occupied by wolves, and parts of the graph that are occupied by rabbits, and parts of the map that are occupied by foxes, for example. Right, where they're predominant, um, and um, so really there's there's three numbers you're trying to plot and their relative positions, right? But those three numbers don't have any relative value in terms of, you know, one is greater than the other two, right? So they're just different categories altogether. So what we need to do when you are visualizing that type of data is using a qualitative data map, data map, color map, where each color is easily distinguishable from all of the rest of the different colors. Right. So this is the kind of thing that you would typically see in a, in a map situation, right? So if you, um, you may recall that if you just look at a map of the United States, for example, you will see that they color each of the states, neighboring states are color different colors because they're just qualitatively different states. That's one type of color map. Um, the second type of color map is the one um, that uh, we've been talking about a lot, which is a continuous data map. Okay. This is the most generic kind to just com to, to convey continuous information. So um, think, for example, of a topographical map where you're, uh, you have a mountain range and you just have um, different, um, different um, altitudes of each of the regions and it varies continuously and it has relative value, right? Higher is lower and that has meaning. Um, so for that type of data set, you want a continuous data set, right? Where there's a set of colors and they vary continuously between the lowest value and the highest value, and it's relatively smooth. So you can kind of see the transitions between the lower values and the higher values. The third type of data set that you require actually yet third different kind of color map for is uh, what we're going to call the diverging data set. Okay? This is something that is closely related to the continuous data set with the key difference, which is that even though the value is continuous, they are both positive and negative, and it's the relative, uh, it's a relative absolute value of those, uh, of those numbers that matter, as well as the sign, right? So let's say, for example, um, that you are making a, a topographic map of a lake, and you have both um, depth information below the lake, as well as altitude information of the mountains above the lake, okay? So what matters is that the lake level is zero, and we don't really care about zero. What we care about are, are the values bigger or smaller, right? So we care both about bigger values and smaller values. And so that is when we use a divergent data set, right? Where we assign the middle value, the zero value, a relatively neutral color that does not stand out, but that we want the positive values to stand out relative to the negative values and that we want uh, there to be a smooth gradation between zero and positive and zero to negative, okay? So the continuous, in contrast, looks something more like this, where this is zero and this is big, right? Okay, so these are different color kinds of color maps that, that you can use, um, and it really impacts the, the visual flavor of your figure, depending on which one you choose. Um, so what I'm going to show you is actually this really nifty tool that came out of the cartography community, um, but really it applies pretty generally to any kind of, um, of color map that you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to look at. Okay? So it's called uh, colorbrewer.org, and uh, what it does is um, it gives you suggested color maps, and it shows you what they look like on top of a map of counties in the southeast. 
Um, and so what you can do is tell you, you can tell it the number of classes you want. So let's say I want nine classes, eight classes, and uh, I want sequential, which one, which is what I call continuous here, right? Um, you can pick your different color schemes, right? Uh, or you can pick diverging, and notice all of these are uh, of the flavor that I talked about. So for example, this one, the green, um, the, the kind of pale yellow is in the middle, and really positive is red, and really negative is blue, okay? So you can try out these color maps and look at how they look on a map, right? And importantly, you can export the RGB values of these data sets by simply selecting these numbers and pasting them into MATLAB and calling that your color map. Uh, remember that the numbers in MATLAB need to be between 0 and 1, so if you, if, you, um, if you paste these values, you have to divide everything by 255 to get them to be between the range of 0 to 1.